a bit of a crack we're in up the stringing into the wall and then back onto the top of the stringing back into the wall oh, starting here and then running into the wall and then back onto the surface and then running back into the wall fading off now there are three ways you can go about doing this first method by far the quickest decorators cork now assuming that you're painting because this does need painting over because it will soon go dirty you're going to dust down and either wipe it over with methylated spirits or wash it down once you've done that and let it dry you're going to need to key it only lightly because you're painting it keying it will help the cork bond to the surface after you've keyed it give it a dust down and then to remove any more dust use a tack cloth that will ensure that your cork bonds to the surface but although that's quick that's not necessarily good in the trade we'll call that buttering up so basically like a piece of bread you just lay in the butter on top well that cork will sit on the surface it's not going to go in anywhere you've also not removed any loose material which will loosen the cork off so quick but not necessarily the best so another method is using hammer fixing something like this which will come with a plug already with it and you literally drill through countersink hammer the fixing in and then screw it in filling the hole after you've finished then you could just put your cork over but again all you're doing there is buttering it up if you're going to use this method just start to investigate rake this out a little bit give somewhere for the cork to go by far really the best method is getting in and having a look so that's what we'll do see what's going on here first of all I've put a sheet down on top of the sheet just to help cleaning up between the stages a little bit quicker so I've got my paint scraper which I'm hoping not to use scraper Stanley knife warm 120 which I'm going to use on the rougher edges and obviously duster brush overall I'm going to be using this 180 on the woodwork generally so first of all have a look what's going on start or I've started by just starting to you know loosen off what is here do a bit of investigating generally it's going to be caused by shock so the tread hitting the stringing and you can hear quite hollow that's tight so So there is a slight gap just underneath the plaster work there that coming off the surface so it could just be an old repair not done quite right
I'll just keep going along this. This bit that's lower down, crack was along the edge running into the wall. I'm literally just following that crack and cutting out what is underneath because that's not bonded to the wall at the back. Also there is a bit of a void down there so I'm going to do the same at the top where it runs into the wall and then obviously what's going on is the plaster is tight and it's not sticking to the stringing. So now after raking out, see it's looking a little bit different. So the plaster here would have been bonded to the stringing and the crack running through. And then the plaster again has gone tight, not bonded to the stringing. And up here where it ran back into the wall, now it's gone slightly bigger again because I've raked out the plaster from underneath which wasn't bonded properly. Bonded to the stringing, but not to the wall behind. Runs out. So I'll probably tack it another inch or two past, but there's no visible signs of any cracking whatsoever. So it's running out there, that's not a problem. I just need to sort this out. So I will open it up a bit more so it's like this, just to make it easier for me. Completely cure this. Opening this up, combination of scraper and my stammer knife. I'm literally just about a quarter of an inch, half an inch at the end of the scraper, just push out some of that filler. I've opened this up all the way along, made it a bit wider so it runs out there, no problem there. And I'll just come to this bit here, put the camera down. So, small angled screwdriver, and if I get my light on, you just see the brickwork at the back there. So, if I just pop this in and see the gap down there. So that gap runs all the way down. All that shock running through, creating the crack. Now I'm just slightly wetting this in, just to ensure a good bond with the foam, which I will be using. And just seal that plaster work as well. You can use water, but Balloted PVA does two jobs at once. Just a damp cloth, just wipe off the woodwork. Now, armed with some white spirit and a cloth, just for any mishaps, I can get my phone, which is shook up, and some newspaper, just for wiping off the nozzle, and I can get this phoned up. Just a little at a time, and sure, and it gets down the back. After an hour or so, about an hour and a half, this should be ready for cutting back. Because the stringing runs under the plaster, I'm just going to cut down this way.
and just release it from the skirting board. Not really going beyond the plaster yet. With a worn 120, just run along that, take it back from you know behind the plaster a little bit, about a quarter of an inch or so. Now, with some zinter bin, I just prime seal this. Getting that right in. Just help hard enough to face that foam as well. That's the primer on the top edge all the way through. Getting a bit of the plaster work as well. And see how far I took it back. Enough room for me filler. Now the expanding foam will be sitting behind the back of that stringing, absorbing any shock that's running through. So sounding different now, a lot more solid. Primer's dry, I lightly keyed it, sanded it using the 180 and now I've mixed up a hard stopper, hard stop which is a stiff mix of polyfiller with some of the paint I'm using. So it's Valspar trade mat that I'm using, which is quite quick drying. So will also help with this polyfiller. I want to come to paint it, it makes it a bit easier. So I'm pushing it right in there. produce is ripples in the filler. So first of all I'm just getting some in. Again, I have to come back to it. That's just for now. So I've filled all the way along. Now before this dries, I've got my damp cloth and I'm just working back up and just smoothing anything off. Just eliminating any of those little ripples because you'll pick up any deviations working that way. Now all I'm doing is with the damp cloth where you can see where the filler is. I just want to take off anything that's sitting on the wall. Save any sanding after. Just don't go over that edge. Well, this is a wipeable paint so it just makes it easier. If it was an ordinary mat, the filler would just dry straight into that. I'm just 
leave it to dry. This has been about half an hour now and already it's becoming hard enough for me to do my next step which basically is just clean up any little bits on this edge and then get ready for another fill but while I'm here I thought I'd just show you something so first of all corking if you've got a cork, remove any loose and put a bit of foam in at least and try and secure it. Just take away that bit of um, vibration. Now, this is where I terminated. So this is the fifth tread. And where I stopped, I just put the nozzle of the foam in, that tube, as far as I could and put some foam in. So, like I say, um, three methods, corking, make sure you do something about it first. Drilling, which overall isn't really going to do much. The staircase is already secure, it's just a bit of vibration. And also, when I say drilling, there is a certain amount of caution. So, below this tread, below the staircase here, is an electric box. Like I say, I put my foam, the tube, as far in as I could. So, drilling. Just take a look down here. Okay, from underneath, on this left side here, this piece is a supporting wall for the staircase. And there is the fifth tread. Right in the corner there is a spot of my foam. So I would have put my tube through and if you notice there, the cable, it's terminated, it's not live but the box is down here so if you're ever drilling always check outside and inside both sides of walls underneath staircases always double check because if you go through a cable like that, then it's a bit of a mole to sort it out. So always be aware if you're thinking of doing any drilling. And generally at the end of the day, it's probably not worth it. You've had to get in some foaming, packing it from behind, giving it something that will just tap that bit of vibration. But be careful. All I'm doing now is just generally wiping over with a cloth and if there's anything that's on, just remove it. Second fill. I've got a damp cloth. Now I've got me filler, hard stop again, damp cloth, I'll just put some on my finger and I've been working from the bottom up and I'm just getting to here, that's what I've done and I'm literally just wiping that in. Just wipe that off on the cloth. That's 
just taken a little bit off the wall. No, not too bad. And the main reason I, why I'm doing that is because just here is where we've got this bit of filler that was left in, whether it be cork or what. So I'm just going to match up. Last bit to do. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. So that's where I've um, filled up to. That's where the transition was. Just take a quick look at that. So that's where the filler was running out there. That's pretty good. Alright there. Now it's dry. Fine 180. I'm just lightly rub this down. Literally just wiping it over. Top edge. And just that lip there. Dust it. And then damp cloth. And that's it. I'm ready for painting. It's the same paint that I mix the hard stop with, scrub them all that, cut in it and get it rolled. leave this to dry now, give it a second coat and then I'm just ready for doing this top edge. That's it, done. This is already primed, it's already keyed, now I'll just give it two coats of water-based satin. And that's the job done. Remember when I started doing this, before I started doing this I should say, I did check underneath the staircase before I did any raking out. 